All right, so today we're gonna to be looking at doing a Dodge Challenger parking lot flip. I wanted to come up with an interesting theme, something that was a little bit unique and stumbled on the idea of doing something within the German Touring Car Championship as an inspiration. There's just a lot of really cool crossover elements with muscle-like um, aero kits um, that are on some of these vehicles and they're just really interesting. I feel like it could potentially be a cool pairing with something like the Dodge Challenger. So, I mean, just take a look at, you know, some of these older Group A DTM cars from back in the day. Super cool Mercedes with this giant wing. Um, BMW M1. There's just a lot of really interesting bits and pieces that we could take and incorporate into a new Challenger. Uh, there is, of course, the Trans Am series as well, which is sort of a little bit more appropriate for a Challenger. There's a lot of interesting elements here as well, um, and a lot of crossover elements uh, in terms of aero kits and liveries and things like that. So there's a lot of inspiration to pull, but we're going to go a little bit more this route just to be unique. Today we're going to be scoping out at our local parking lot for a car in need of a design flip. I'll be hunting down a vehicle, snapping some photos, and using some creativity to modify and or redesign these vehicles into something that is super cool. This is Parking Lot Flip. All right, so let's get into the actual design here. This is the Dodge Challenger that I found. It was undercover, so there's a little bit of a shadow casting over most of the body, um, but figured that could be kind of an interesting thing from a visual aspect and demonstrate how the form is changing over that shadow area. Um, you can see I'm working on a large old Wacom, just sketching out some lines over the top of this thing, trying to take some of that inspiration from specifically this Audi touring car that I found that was pretty interesting, really large, um, you know, super wide fenders that are gonna look, I think, very fitting on a vehicle like this. Um, and thinking through how that might incorporate into some of these other splitter elements in the front, um, as well as you know some of the other details around the aero, the venting, that sort of thing. Um, so sketching that in with a pretty large brush, soft brush currently, um, using the variable pressure on a layer on the top in this high contrast orange color just to make sure I can see it well. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking about this in terms of not necessarily a realistic racer or anything like that. It's just a road going vehicle that takes some of this inspiration from German touring cars um, and builds on the muscle car elements in kind of a different way than you normally would see. So again, thinking about those really large fenders, uh, vents in the top hood, as well as, you know, maybe some of the lighting elements around the grill um, and some of the vent elements down below. First off, just going to quickly use the pen tool to highlight some of the areas that I want to lower. Um, make sure that this has a little bit more of a race going stance. And uh, that'll be kind of the starting off point for getting this done. Doing pretty quick selections here. This is not anything to be super precise about. My plan is to get this sketch done in about 30 minutes or so. Um, so just selecting the body making sure I'm not getting any of the uh, wheel well or the tires in there or anything like that, just to make it a little bit more clean. And we're gonna select that and then we're gonna start getting into using a really large soft brush um, and start highlighting and shadowing some of these areas and forms that we wanna create. I turn that first layer, that really um, quick sketch layer in orange um, and a very low opacity again on the top layer. And now I'm going in with that large soft brush and then erasing out with a um, hard brush, making sure that I get some crisp lines. Later on, I'm gonna start fading those in with a softer brush 
or a softer eraser just to make sure that they transition a little bit more clearly. But I want to start building in these blocks, uh, these building blocks first, just to get a rough idea of how some of these forms are going to fit onto the body. Make sure they don't look um, completely out of place or disproportional or anything like that. So just getting a rough idea really quickly, layering these in. Zooming in and out. I was flipping and um, flipping the canvas quite often. This kind of tricks your mind into seeing things in a little bit of a different perspective um, and can help you see if there's any issues regarding perspective or um, proportion or anything like that. So that's definitely a, a thing that I would recommend doing. And you can tell that I'm rotating the canvas quite a lot as well, just so I can make sure that I'm lining my wrist or my arm movements up with the canvas in a way that helps me accomplish whatever I'm trying to take care of. So built out that first front fender in a really general way. Again, these are just building blocks. Um, I want to make sure that I carry in that, that shadow line as well and start to help the form to read a little bit more like it's cast in shadow and part of this particular uh, photo. Then later on, I'll go in there and again, start to erase out some of those areas, but I'm, I'm color picking a lot in this photo itself so that I can make sure that the lighting and the coloring is all matching and making it feel like it's part of the same photo. Again, large soft brush for this light catcher. And then a hard eraser. erasing out anything that I feel wasn't needed. You can kind of get a sense of how I'm arranging these layers over there in the right as well. Um, mostly thinking about how those building blocks may stack on each other. Um, and best help me transition some of the, the form changes that happen between say the front fender and that light catcher and all these different panels I'm putting on separate layers just so I have a little bit more control of them in the future. Now I'm building out that rear panel, kind of get a sense of how that looks. You can see I've built out that front splitter as well and then put a few more vents in the front, just giving it this really functional and very utilitarian look like it it's very pur purposeful driven. Um, taking a lot of inspiration again from those DTM cars. Experimenting a little bit with how some of the light might reflect onto some of these surface changes. These are all in a pretty soft brush, again, pressure sensitive. And I'm erasing them until they kind of feel like they're starting to transition from form to form. Some of these colors are still reading a little bit off to me, so you'll see I, I changed those out just slightly and experiment with what looks like it's part of the photo. Now I'm color picking to make sure that some of these transition areas look appropriate. And again, you can see right there that I'm changing the color up to make it look a little bit more like it's fitting in. This one's reading a little bit dark. So again, putting that on a separate layer is going to give me a lot of control over that layer itself. Um, and I can narrow in and directly affect that particular layer. And of course, has to have some sort of livery element. Of course, I went the route with um, a little bit more of a muscle influence. And what I'm trying to do here is connect a lot of the forms together that feel like they visually could be connected together. So it's transitioning from the stripe down in the lower air dam up into a side vent over through the shoulder line and towards the rear of the vehicle. Then I experimented a little bit with what kind of layer style this should be on just to make sure it read um, more realistically and 
really reading the color correctly because it, it needed to be this particular green color. See, there's a lot of zooming in and out and rotating and flipping the canvas. And finally, we added a few details here. Um, what do you think? Was this kind of an interesting interpretation of the way a muscle car could be flipped? Um, give me an idea of what you liked best. If you have any questions on technique um, or how we accomplished this particular sketch, let me know in the comments.